Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to help support this channel, it won't cost you anything. All you gotta do is use the links in the description if you wanted to pick up any of the tools or products I use in this video. Hey, what's going on, Rich? Back with another awesome video for you. I got a Honda uh, laying down on its side right now for my power washer, and I'm having a really hard pull uh, when I go to start it. Uh, the pull the pull starter over here is, is snapping back. It's not pulling. It's just, it feels like it's locked up. So basically what that is, everybody's telling me it's a symptom of having the uh, rocker arms cracked or having a problem with them. So the only way to really find out is to take the motor apart. What you need is a 10 millimeter socket, as we have right here. You take out four bolts, one, two, three, four. You need something like a chisel or a flathead screwdriver to be able to scrape the gasket sealer off once you take this apart. Well, you're gonna need something like this. Permatex, the right stuff, uh, this is a gasket sealer. So basically what this does is, you once you take this apart and get everything cleaned up, you're gonna take this and run a bead of, of uh, the gasket sealer all the way around the outside of this and then put this back on to be able to seal it shut. So the only way to find out if this is the rockers that are having problems is to take this whole thing apart. So basically it's either that or it's gonna be the pump, which is a bad pump. So I'm gonna go with this first. Basically this is maybe, this is less than 15 bucks to get a, a bottle of this or a can of this. Take the screwdriver and stick it in here on the side. And just try to pry it up. I was able to just hold this right here and put the screwdriver on the one side and just kind of peel it up. And once you get the one side, you should be able to just peel the whole thing. So there we go, this is what the inside of it looks like. What you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to take the screwdriver and really get this stuff off. Uh, you're gonna really need to scrape this off well and you're gonna to need to get it off the engine as well without, and you gotta make sure it doesn't go into the engine. So I took the valve cover, of course. Uh, so what we're gonna need is we're gonna need a feeler gauge, two or 0.08 for exhaust. 0.06 is gonna be your intake, which is on this side. Uh, 0.08 is gonna be your exhaust, which is this side. Oh, you're gonna need a nine millimeter open end box wrench for these nuts right here. You're gonna need a pair of needle nose pliers to hold these bolts right here while you're turning the nine mil. So we need a 13 16th socket for the spark plug. Just put that on. Just gonna need to put that on for the spark plug to take the spark plug out. Take that, loosen it up. Just put this to the side, make sure you don't bang it. You don't wanna mess with the gap in the spark plug, so make sure you put this somewhere safe. So I didn't have a nine millimeter. I ended up getting a open end box wrench, which is right here. We're just gonna set that to the size of the nut, like so. Now that we have our spark plug out, we just take our wire, put it to the side, extension for my socket, which is right here. We take that and put it inside the hole for the spark plug and it's just going to sit on top of the piston. So the valves right here have to be all the way up and the piston has to be all the way up. That's when everything is closed. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the pull string and rotate it. And as you can see, you're going to watch right here. You're going to see my socket extension go up and down as I try to rotate it. There it is going up and down. As you can see, this one opened. It is. You want to loosen these nuts while the pins are still in, make it a little bit easier. Just loosen them up. Okay. We've got our new valve rockers right here. As you can see, these are genuine Honda parts, and we've got our rocker arms here. We've got our replacements. The second one. We've got our intake and our exhaust. So obviously, if you don't remember how to, to figure that out, here's your intake, your uh, air filter. Here's your exhaust, intake exhaust. So I'm just gonna get this threaded before I put it back in. Just take our screw, thread that in, and screw down the nut. Where the other one is, right about there, barely any thread sticking up above the nut. So we just take our old one out. So all you do to get it out, just push right here, slides the pin up, pin comes right out. Take the old rocker arm out. Put the new one in, take our pin, okay, pins back in. We could take our intake side off, get that loosened up right there, spin this nut off, pull our pin out, take our pin, pull it out, take our rocker arm off, a little bit more than halfway in sticking down, so that's how you know how much to take it out. 
thread this back in. Again, remember how much we put in before. It was a little bit more sticking through this way than it was sticking out on this side. So put that on. Thread the nut back on. Make sure we put it back the same way we put it in. Put the pin back in, slide the pin inside, and there you have it. So remember, intake side, the six thousandths of an inch. Okay, I'm just gonna clean that off, make sure it's nice and clean. Stick that in like so. It's definitely tight, so it's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to loosen this up. So we're sticking our feeler gauge in and it's sliding and it's definitely got some drag. That's perfect, that's what we want. You have to hold this inside bolt right here with a pair of pliers or they have a special tool to do that. But once we get the bottom nut tight, you're gonna see that the screw doesn't move. You're gonna tighten this up, there we go. And the key thing is after you do this, after you tighten it, you have to take the feeler gauge and check and double check that it didn't move. It's a little bit loose now, so it moved a little bit we're gonna have to loosen that and just double check. We're gonna have to do it one more time. So you're gonna have to be patient. This is how you do it. There's no other way. By putting the feeler gauge back in and checking to make sure it still has drag and it doesn't have any lift, which is perfect. So as you can see, it has drag and it doesn't lift up. That's exactly where we want it. You hear that? I could feel it. It's perfect. So we're gonna have to do this on our exhaust side with eight thousandths of an inch or 0.2 millimeter. Got the perfect amount of drag right here. We're gonna make sure we keep the bolt right where it is so it doesn't move. I'm gonna grab that with the pliers, take our box wrench, and tighten this down. That's it, we are good to go. Now hopefully it didn't move. Again, we're gonna check it. I'm sliding it in. I don't know if you could hear that really, really nice amount of drag it has, just about perfect. It's like, you'll feel it like, kind of like dragging down, and you also lift it up and make sure it doesn't pop up. That's perfect, that's right where we want it. So we are good to go. At this point, all we gotta do is make sure now our valves are both up, they're adjusted perfectly. Uh, so at this point, just take our spark plug wire and boot, put that to the side, put our spark plug back in, tighten that down, take our valve cover. We're gonna have to clean this, make sure you get all the sealant that's on here on these edges, all the way around the whole thing. You're gonna have to scrape that away. We're gonna have to make sure we scrape it without getting it back into the engine. So you could use a small razor blade or a flat chisel or something like a flathead screwdriver. You don't wanna scratch the metal because it is aluminum, keep in mind. What I would recommend is using a vacuum. What you wanna do is put a vacuum over here while you're scraping it so that the vacuum sucks all the particles and all the dirt and dust into the vacuum and nothing goes into the motor because we don't want that. And once you're done doing that, you gotta do the same thing on the inside of the valve cover which is right here. We're gonna make sure we get all this stuff off the inside of this. Then we put our RTV sealant all the way around the outside, which I showed you before. We can sandwich it back together and then put the four bolts in and then we're good to go. Okay, so I wanna show you on the overhead valve cover uh, how much of a pain in the butt it is. It really, really is hard to do. Uh, I wish I would've just bought a new one, but I didn't. I didn't have time to get it shipped because I needed to get this thing put back together. I really wish I would've taken the time to just buy one and have a new one sitting here, but I didn't have time, I apologize, I gotta talk over the pump, the uh, sprinkler system pump just came on, can't shut it off. So basically what you gotta do is, you just gotta go over with a screwdriver and scrape it all off. So it's a real pain in the butt to do, but once you get it all clean, just go over with a little bit of brake parts cleaner and it should be good to go. I would highly recommend just getting a new one because they're only about 10 bucks, but I mean it depends on if your time is worth $10 or not to do this. It's gonna take a while to do, at least a half hour. So. Just depends, again, how much time you have and if you want to do it. And again, you got to make sure when you take it off, sometimes they bend a little bit. As you can see, this was a little bit bent from drying it off. So you just take a pair of pliers, like so, and you can bend it back and you can straighten it. But you don't want to leave it, uh, you don't want to bend it back too much. And, you, and if it's too much, if it's bent too badly to begin with, sometimes it just can't be fixed and you're just going to need a new way to run quarter inch to eighth inch to quarter inch speed from one surface running to all the holes. Assemble all the parts within five minutes, tightening the tool specifications. Vehicle can be returned to service immediately. That's what it looks like. It comes out like this. So now that I know how it comes out, we're going to try to just make a bead. So that's Make sure to get it around the holes it says. So I'm going to get it here around all the holes. Continuous bead.
around the uh, go around the holes just to make sure. There we go. Okay. I just want to get them all the way down first. I'm not going to tighten them yet, so they're all just snug. So now I'm going to tighten this one all the way down. I'm going to go to cross pattern. I'm going to do this guy here. Now I'm going to do this guy here. Now I'm going to do this one up here. And we should be good to go. Now all we got to do is just put the spark plug back in. Spark plugs nice and clean, everything should be okay. Start threading it slowly, make sure it starts going in. And then we just tighten it down with our ratchet. There it is. Don't over tighten this. There we go. Good to go. Put the spark plug boot back on. Now, after doing a job like this, you are going to lose some oil, so you're definitely going to want to check your oil fluid levels. And after you check your fluid level, you might even want to do an oil change, which I'm going to do myself. I would definitely drain the oil out and put new oil in, but that's just me. Either way, you should definitely check your oil level before you start this back up. And once your oil is good and you got some gas in it, you should start right up and have no problems. We're back. This thing's all hooked up. Got the spark plug on, got the case back on, everything's good to go. And as you can see, I'm putting my hand on the exhaust. It is not hot. It has not been running at all. I uh, just want to make sure there's gas in here. A lot of times people are having a hard time starting this, and what you want to do is you want to hold the trigger down on the wand, you want to let all the air out, and then you want to hold the trigger down on the wand as you're starting it also. That's another big thing that a lot of people don't do. I'm actually going to hold down the trigger on the wand as I pull start it. Set the choke, turn the fuel to on, I'm going to give it a pull, see what happens. So as you can see, she's running perfect and everything worked out great. So we don't have any leaks whatsoever. Everything's running perfect. I did an oil change on it and she's running as smooth as a top. So if you're having a problem starting your Honda GCV 160 or 190, the first thing you want to do is make sure you pull down the trigger on the handle as you're pull starting it because sometimes the purge valve, there's a problem with that. So that's the first thing you want to do. Then the next thing it's going to be, you're going to have to replace the rocker arms like I did. And if all else fails, then you're probably going to need a new pump. So those are pretty much your three main things that it could be. I really hope this video helped you out. If you wanted to help support this channel, again, make sure to use the links in the description down below if you wanted to pick up anything I use in this video. And if you can, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel for more awesome content, and let me know if you've got any questions or comments in the section down below. Thanks again for watching. Take care.